Uh, Professor Andrew Dempster, uh, you're the director with the Australian uh, Centre for Space Research here at the University of New South Wales. Thanks for joining us on Australia in Space TV. Glad to talk to you. Uh, we're at your SpaceSat uh, Plus workshop uh, here in Sydney. Uh, it's an amazing program of two days. Uh, you've been going since 2014. Um, maybe how, how's the program gone over two years, uh, sorry, over 10 years uh, and how it looks now? It's, uh, it looks an amazing program. Well, the transformation of the industry has been amazing and, uh, and I guess the, the event reflects that. We had in our first year, um, virtually no one had built a satellite or there was no launch companies that even existed at that time. And that first event really was a protest sort of event. The published government policy was that Australia would not do satellites and we would not do launch. And so when that event ran, we called it launching CubeSats for and from Australia. And really it was just a collection of people talking about what they would like to do and what they might plan to do. Now, we're talk we're 10 years down the track, we've got people who have already launched satellites into space, are talking about what went wrong with those ones, how they'd improve it for their next one. Uh, we've got launch companies, we've got companies that are operating spaceports that have already launched uh, payloads for... NASA, it's really quite a significant transformation in a relatively short time. Well, we're on the back of a, a surprising announcement from the Australian government last last week on funding for the industry. Yes. Uh, some commentary here uh, from some of the industry representatives today already. What type of reflection does that provide when you run an event like this off the back of that kind of an announcement? Well, there's a couple of things. One is that, like I said, that first one was a bit of a protest and we were trying to make some sort of political point. Over the years, that has become less important. But I think the time has come for us once again to really start applying ourselves as a sector to educating the government. We managed to do that slowly when the Liberals were in power. Now that Labor is in power, we're going to have to do it all again because yeah. they seem not to get it. Um, at the time that the Space Agency was announced, Kim Carr got it but uh, maybe he's um, out of favour at the moment within the government. Certainly, uh, the relative, or the, the, the members of uh, or the ministry who have the, the levers are not interested in space. To some extent, that's bad news, but it's not as bad as it could be. Yeah. Over the years, um, over recent years, I've been getting up in public and saying it's the best time to do space in Australia in my in my career and I started a space company in 1988 and that was true every time I got up because each time I got up it was better than when I previously did. So we've had a, a long period of uh, improvement, we're having a setback now, it's not as bad as some of the setbacks we've had in the past and we've now got a much stronger base to build off. So our ability as a group like this to engage with government to get them back on track because it's the government that's off track, it's not us. Yep. Um, we can treat that like an opportunity. Well, look, and it's also an amazing centre that you've got here in terms of just walking around the Centre for Engineering and Telecommunications here. Uh, how does this look from a student perspective and your workforce, sort of future workforce coming into the industry? Yeah, well, um, again, the, the, the transformation over the last decade is truly amazing. Uh, we get a number of newsletters each month, and whereas these days those newsletters have... 10 engineering jobs at this company, 15 engineering jobs at this company. Uh, I think the most that we ever saw in one go was something like 80. That was not the case. When I started running this centre, which was 2010, trying to convince students to take on the space part of aerospace, uh, particularly in the, in the master's area, Und undergrad was, was okay, but uh, postgrad quite difficult. There was no reason or that they did not perceive a reason to do uh, master's courses in space because there was no career for them. Now, yep. it's a bit of a chicken and egg because we have to produce the workforce to do the work or to create the companies, um, but we also have to have the companies that are looking for that, that workforce. So I think as time's gone by, that has worked its way through the system. There's a lot more students, uh, undergrads, who are entering international competitions. We've just had one of our own student teams come second in, a, in a, uh, an international competition in Colorado. The winners were Polish right. uh, on, on how to move regolith around on the moon. So 
students, are, I think, are much more engaged in space now, and they have a reason to be much more engaged, as long as they don't look too closely at how competently we are being governed. Beautiful. Well, look, I think uh, the, you can hear the buzz in the room here. You're coming to the end of day one. You've got a two-day program. Uh, we've just heard from Equatorial Launch Australia, uh, Space Machines Company. I see others here like Fleet and, and, your, and your key sponsors. Yeah. Uh, well done on the conference. Uh, and hopefully we'll see you in Perth coming up. What's, your, what's a good call to action? The, the next event we're going to be running is the Off Earth Mining Forum West in nice. Perth. We're taking, we're taking it to WA for the first time and uh, we're really trying to engage directly with the mining industry there so they can learn the benefits that space can bring to them in mining um, and the, the synergies between the space industry and the mining industry. What do, you, do you think that's an opportunity there for Australia in terms of those cross-sector with what space means for the likes of agriculture, mining and, and other sectors? I think um, if we are looking in the space sector to deliver unique things and bringing some of our strengths, we would be foolish not to look at mining. Australia's dominance in the international mining uh, arena, the technology that is being developed in some of our big and second and third tier miners and, and in the services industry for the mining industry. So there's a lot of clever people doing a lot of useful things. It works the other way as well. We yeah. can take that technology and take it to space and that's a way that Australia can really turbocharge this, this growth. But I think there's I think there's actually even more for the, for the mining industry to learn from the space industry. Yeah. So what, what I would like to do is, is to make those guys think, okay, if we set um, you know, extraction of water on the moon as a problem, that's a hard problem. So in the solving of that problem, we're going to solve dozens of simpler problems that they can start applying in their minds straight away yeah. in terms of automation, in terms of zero entry mining. There are so many things they can learn. And that's what we're trying to engage them on in a month and a half. Wonderful. Well, best of luck. We'll see you in Perth. Thank you very much for joining us on Australian Space TV uh, and best of success for day two of your program. Thank you very much.